today we're checking out the Nipogi AK1 Plus, a palm sized PC trying to be your office workhorse, media hub, and maybe even your kids' Roblox machine, all for under $200. Now, if you already watched 10 videos on this thing, stick around. I'm here to give you the 1% most people miss, the moments that made me go, wait, what? So hit subscribe if you like honest, unsponsored tech reviews, and let's dive in. Crack open the box and you get exactly what you would expect. No gimmicks, no surprises. First up, the star of the show, the PC itself. We'll get into design in a sec, but spoiler alert, it doesn't scream cheap. It's got vibes. Underneath that, in the bottom tray you'll find a quick start manual and warranty paperwork. A 1 meter HDMI cable, short but practical if you're planning to mount this thing. A 30 watts power adapter and a VESA mount with matching screws. That short HDMI cable might seem stingy but if you're slapping this on the back of a monitor or TV it actually makes sense. Now let's talk about the form factor. This thing is small. Like hide it behind a coffee mark small and then the moment you power it on you notice something unexpected that soft blue LED ring glowing around the top. It's subtle. It's slick and it's your first hint that the AK1 Plus has more going on than its budget label lets on. Which brings us right into the design. At just 128 by 128 and 52 mils and 0.4 kilos, it's about as compact as mini PC gets. Think Minis Forum AI X1 size, which I'll show you in the future vid, so if you're curious, you know what to do. Yeah, it's plastic, but doesn't feel like it's from a cereal box. Matte black body and this glowing light band around the top that gives off budget Tron energy. Kinda cool. Now, about that port layout. It's weird. It's like front is side, back is side weird. But here's what you get. Front right, I think. Power button, two USB 3.0, one USB 2.0. Back left, probably. Another USB 2.0, dual HDMI, LAN, audio jack and power input. The other side just vents. Aesthetic chaos. It's asymmetrical once you plug things in, but honestly, I dig it. It's got character. Oh, and that bottom compartment. At first, I thought it was for batteries. I know, mini PC plus A batteries equals chaos. Turns out, it's a SATA bay for 2.4 inch SSD or HDD connected via internal USB-C. Yes, internal. You can't use that USB-C for anything else unless you unscrew the bottom and lay the whole thing sideways, which is a choice. But hey, it works. And in case you're browsing Amazon and spot a similar design, this exact model might show up as Camrui AK1 Plus in some regions. Under the plastic shell sits an Intel Order Lake N97 CPU, 4 cores, 4 threads, 12 watts DDP. Not built for gaming, but surprisingly capable. Here's the core spec list. 16 gigs DDR4 RAM sodium, upgradable if you ever feel like tinkering. 512 gigs SATA SSD shows 477 gigs usable out of the box. Room for a 2.5 inch SATA HDD or SSD via that bottom bay. I dropped in a 320 gigs drive from an old Toshiba. Perfect for movie storage. Intel UHD graphics maxed at 1200 MHz. Now let's talk SSD. The factory mounted 512 gigs SATA SSD actually performs better than expected. Crystal Disk Mark showed read at 529 megabytes per second and write 483 megabytes per second. For a SATA drive, I think that's solid. Boot times are fast, apps open near instantly and file transfers don't make you want to nap. Sure, it's not NVMe speed, but for daily use, web work and light editing, I think this thing feels snappy. No lag, no delays, just smooth sailing. It also handles dual 4K displays at 60Hz with no drama. I tested it on 60 inch LG 4K TV, stable signal, crisp image and zero issues even with HDR enabled. The integrated GPU won't blow you away, but it gets the job done without complaint. 
Windows 11 Home took just under 8 minutes to set up. BIOS is simple and gives you all the essentials. Perfect if you plan to run this as a server or took it behind a monitor. Wi-Fi surprised me. My Raspberry Pi drops out in this room all the time. The AK1 Plus rock solid. Never missed a beat. Let's throw some numbers around because what's a review without a bit of geekery? The AK1 Plus is powered by the Intel N97 which, yeah, it's not trying to compete with Threadripper, but we ran a few benchmarks to see how it holds up in real-world tasks. So in Signbench R23, in Multicore 1965 points, in Singlecore 865 points. What that means, you're not editing 8K video here, but for office work, emails, browsing, and even juggling a few tasks tasks at once, no sweat. The single core score is actually on par with all the high-end laptop chips like the i7-4850HQ. Respectable stuff for something you can hide behind a coffee mug. In Geekbench 6, in single core 1225, in multi core 3003, in GPU in OpenCL 4995. That GPU score is miles ahead of Raspberry Pi 5 and lands this mini PC comfortably in entry-level desktop zone. It's not going to render Pixar films, but it will handle Netflix, spreadsheets and the occasional Canva projects without gasping for air. As I mentioned earlier, it comes with a 512 gigs SATA SSD. Not NVMe fast, but not slow either. Now, this part surprised me. The fan is whisper quiet. About 20 decibels idle and barely louder when on the load. It stopped out around 50 celsius externally during heavy usage so it stays cool without sounding like a jet engine. And no, it's not fanless, it's just actually quiet. Imagine that. I handed it off to my 9 year old. Roblox ran fine on low settings. Default settings, he called it lag city. Fair. Streaming in 4K HDR from HDD, flawless. Office apps, smooth. Light multitasking, no hiccups. GameCube emulation via Dolphin, surprisingly great. Run Mario Kart with no issues. I tried DaVinci Resolve, nope, doesn't meet the requirements. But CapCut runs fine for basic 1080p edits if you're not expecting buttery previews. Let's not kid ourselves, this isn't a gaming machine. Roblox, yes, it's playable. Retro emulation, absolutely no issues running GameCube games on Dolphin. Valorant, sort of. You can run Valorant, but I hit a VAN 9003 error until I enabled UEFI Secure Boot in BIOS. Once set, it was playable, but let's say not buttery. And then I pushed it. Forza Horizon 5 at 1080p, system set 0 FPS in benchmark mode. Then I dropped it to 720 pixels, lowest settings, everything's off, and I had 20 FPS on average. Slideshow city, but again, temps stayed cool and no fan spike. So here's the deal. AK1 Plus isn't pretending to be something it's not. It's not for gaming, it's not for heavy rendering, but if you need a quiet, compact and capable little machine for office work, streaming, light multitasking or even a bit of retro gaming, this one's absolutely delivers. You've got room to upgrade the RAM, swap in a bigger SSD and drop in a second drive underneath. For around $150 to $180, you're looking at a system that boots fast, stays cool, barely makes a sound and just quietly gets on with the job. There's no bloat, no weird software and no deal breaking flows. Just a solid mini PC with thoughtful design, clean performance and honest value. So if that's what you're after, this one's easy to recommend. Agree, disagree, drop your hot takes in the comments. And while you're here, don't forget to subscribe. I know you want to. Family Pop TV.